traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, looking good, Billy Ray. Uh, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to go over some charts today, folks. And I can say, without any hesitation at all, that these are the most important charts that I've ever posted here at TFN, with the exception of March the 5th of 2009. The first chart that you're going to be looking at today is the NASDAQ, going back to the high that we made you know, back in December, it topped in December. The Dow Jones, S and P, Russell all topped. In, oh, Russell topped in December also, but the others stopped on uh, January fourth. Okay. Now, what we've done now is we've come down for just about 11 months, and we've rallied four months into a 382 retracement that we've just hit the second time. Just now, you see it right there on the Nasdaq. Remember, this let us down. And this is what we're looking at right now. It's already 200, 200 handles under that price already as we come into Fed time. I tried to send these out by my usual method of videos, and I was shut down by Google today because they wanted uh, some extra money for some terabytes, whatever that stuff means. It hasn't been corrected yet. You're going to get this thing late. But it was done very, very early in the morning, and I want to walk through what I was looking at so you'll be able to see the importance of the day that we're looking at right now. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down and just take a look here at the, uh, the price level here that we're going to be watching here in the S&P. Let me get this up here so that you'll all be able to see it. All I did is this is the E-mini S&P. And I just broke it down to the last 10 days so you can see the importance of uh, what we're looking at here. And then we'll go through one chart at a time. You can see the ABCD structure. There's your 61% retracement of the February high right up here at 4068. But you can see here we've actually made the first ABCD already uh, right here. That was at uh, 40, uh, 40, 48, 40, 48. That's where the next one came in, okay? So you have two numbers sitting there. There's a chance we might make that 4068 with the Fed out there, and I certainly would be looking at that, and there's a chance maybe we get up to here. All I know is, folks, we're, we're at an area now that's going to be very, very interesting. They'll probably talk about this in the history book someday. Now let's take a look at a couple others here. So now what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to show you the Dow Jones E-mini, and this is going to go back to the high that the Dow Jones made. Let's get this up here so you'll be able to see it. You'll see there's where we were way back here in uh, April, if you remember that. Um, April, May, March. No, that was February. That was your February 6th high. Okay, now what you've done is you've made a 382 retracement of the high we made two months uh, back on February 6th, and we hit it one, two, three, four times uh, in the last... Uh, a few uh, trading days. This is a four-hour chart, okay? And we're already down 200 points from that. The actual number, if you did the daily, came in at uh, 28. Uh, <laughs> let's try it again, Larry. I think it's uh, 32.85, whatever it was. It was the exact number. Yeah, it was 32, 32.850 was the exact number. The high today was 32845 Okay, the next one we're going to take a look at here is, uh, just bear with me one second. And this one here, uh, we've just looked at that one. Give me one other second here, and we'll get the other one up here. And here is the NASDAQ on a shorter-term basis. I want to get this, uh, this actually a longer-term basis. Sorry, give me a second. Um, this is why this is so important, folks, because this led us up, and I think it's going to lead us down, but, you know, like they say, some days it's chicken salad, and some days it's something else. There's what you're looking at, folks. There's your. This is a weekly chart, okay? You came down for 11 months. You've been up for four, 
and you stopped at the 382 twice, once uh, on the February the 6th, and we just hit it again today. We matched that high within one within four points, folks. 29. We're already 200 handles below it. Okay, so I probably don't mean anything, but we're just going to be looking at some of these things because maybe I sent this video out, but unfortunately you didn't get it, and uh, that's my problem. Okay, now here is the Russell. I want to just give you the Russell and uh, bring this up. And Stan Harley will be our guest here at the break and always bring some nice stuff to us. You see, yesterday, the um, the Russell made a 382 retracement of that high we made on February 6th. That was yesterday. It's been down all today. It couldn't even take out yesterday's high. They're expecting the Federal Reserve to raise rates by a quarter percent. If they raise rates by zero or cut rates, oh, my God, don't buy that rally. Because if they do that, the Fed is saying, uh-oh, we done made a mistake and we got to correct that puppy. So I don't know what's going to happen. But if they raise it a half a point, I don't think it's going to make much difference any there. I think we got a caller. Somebody got through on the line today. This would be wonderful. Let's see who this is. I hear the dialing tone, and it's Tony from St. Louis. My gosh, I used to go there with my grandma there on a little Italian hill there and, and buy uh, salami and cheese back when I was a little shaver. What can I do for you, Tony? Uh, hey, Larry. It's a real pleasure to talk to you. Um, I hear you uh, talk about um, the Floor Traders Handbook a lot, and yes. I was just wondering where I can purchase that book at because um, – yeah. When I look it up on Amazon, it's I, I can find the Floor Traders Confidential Handbook by George no. Ansel. Is that the book no, you're referring to? No, 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 to, no. Or? This is the, just just deal me at Larry at TradingTutor.com. It's a, okay. the reason why the reason why Tony. It's a 90 page PDF and has a 90 minute video describing the ABCD patterns, why they work, and they use uh, we used I think we used 30,000 examples to get the statistics right, only using the euro. To prove that the ABCD works and the statistics behind what we do here with the Fibonacci numbers and standard deviations, it all fits together. But it takes 90 minutes, and it's a professionally done video by John Jameson, who that's his business, and he he did it for us, and that's why uh, that's what it is. But if you just drop me at Larry at TradingTutor.com, I'll tell you how to do it. It's real simple, and uh, I th I, th I know you're going to like it. So appreciate it. And Tony, please tell the people this is not a setup call. I would never do anything like that. So no, no, I'm glad it's really not. I just I watch your interest, show so. every day and well, you talk you. about it every day, so I figure it must be yeah. pretty important. So today's is the most important day since May the fifth or March the fifth of two thousand and nine, in my opinion. Yeah. So we'll I see. I agree. We'll see what happens in a few okay. hours here or, yes, or in sir. an hour. We, indeed we will. Indeed we will. All right. Well, uh, have a great day, Larry. Hey, is, Thank is, you very is, much. The little is the, the Italian section there in St. Louis. Is it still thriving? I mean, I I haven't been there in sixty years, probably, but that was a big well, deal. Well, I actually there. live about an hour south of it, so I'm not super oh, familiar okay. with St. Louis. Okay. I'm actually from Chicago, but it, okay. it may be yeah. Well, thank you for calling in. Buy a lottery ticket. I don't know how you got through. You were one of the lucky ones. All right. Thank you, Larry. You have a good one. All right. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, folks, I uh, went through the stock market stuff. I'm going to run through the gold. I wouldn't do any of these trades, folks. I'm just giving it to you for historical purposes. You know, that's pretty basically it. Anyway, there's where we were here. This is an hourly chart on the uh, uh, the, the uh, hello operator. I'm a little bit tired. Anyway, uh, we had a 382 retracement uh, right here. If you remember, that led to the big ABCD up here. There's our 382 on the way down. Um, excuse me, 61% retracement of this move right here. I'll do the rest of it, but that number came in at, uh, uh, let me see, 1938, and the low was 19, no, 1937, the low was 1936.10. So there's a perfect example that that stuff, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That one just didn't work. Now let's take a look at the other one on a little bit longer time frame. Remember we had this... Uh, beautiful trade that we had on the other day one of the few that we had that worked out let's get this up here put it in here this shows you the uh, ABCD pattern here we were looking of course at the uh, uh, hourly chart I don't know if this was just a 15 minute chart because we were trying to nail that high we had the 382 rally back we hit it twice and we hit the Dow Jones here four times so I don't know if it means much but there's your ABCD down and we went a little bit below that and the reason why we did I'm going to bring this next one to you uh, also. Where is it, you little rascal? And there you are. I think this is it. Okie dokie. Let's get it right up here. Here's the long-term weekly. And there's a tiny bit of variance because of the, uh, how do you call that thing, the rollover of the, between the April and June because June's the lead contract now. But there you can see the old high that we had right back here for the breakout. Remember this one right here? That was the big breakout, okay? And uh, then we went up here, and 382 on this whole move from down in here comes in here at 1939. But again, it went to 1936.9, so you missed that. So there's another one that didn't work. But, you know, we just give it to you for a little flavor of sometimes when they don't work, you got to know when they do work. The one thing I feel very strongly about is this. This is where we were in March the 5th of 2009. And for reasons I can't go into, I'm going to tell you that this three drive to a bottom pattern, where we are, this is stocks, Dow Jones 666, okay? 
And guess what, folks? That was a bottom. I said there's going to be a rally that would blow the socks off of 1938's rally. Well, it went from there all the way to 40,000. But we are over this kind of time frame right now. Everything lines up. I mean, it all does. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, who knows what's going to happen next? All I do know is that keep an eye on the bank stocks because if the bank stocks can't rally during this, God help us when they start to sell off again. And that's what my biggest fear is. And uh, hopefully all of these are going to fail so we don't have to worry about that. So that's the main thing we want to pay very, very close attention to. Now, remember here, we uh, brought this uh, uh, volatility of the bonds here from our good friend J.C. Parrots, Juan Carlos Parrots for all-star charts. I want to bring this up to show you that this is just the beginning of something that I think will be historic. It hasn't even been historic yet. Well, it is for companies like uh, Silicon ba Bank and some of the others. Okay, and that's pretty much it. All right, there's where we are. This is where we were a long time ago, of course, and I think we'll exceed that eventually. But uh, th there's more volatility to come, so we'll see. All I can say is uh, today's the day. You know, I I know nothing about the astrology or none of that. I mean, I know a tiny bit enough to get me into trouble, but that's neither here nor there. Also, I wanted to bring one other one to it because we hit the exact 382 today in the uh, uh, the, the Bitcoin at 28,400, I believe was it. I don't know where it the trading was, but I think that number, it hit 28,000 three times, 22, 28.2, and then 28.4. I don't know where, uh, can someone alert me to where uh, Bitcoin is trading now, because I don't want to make any more, because uh, if it's if it's, you know, if it's up like 29,000, then, you know, maybe this is, and I don't trade it, folks. I'm just looking at things that tell me that, uh, hey, look, I just patterns, a, B, C, D. There's no Elliott wave in here. You don't, I don't do Elliott wave counts. It's just uh, something that I can't do. But let's talk about money, all right? Here is what we want to be looking at, and this is from yesterday, okay? That's when I had some email running, and we'll get this up here and take a look at it. This is the U.S. dollar index, okay? Now, this is short term because we're going to be looking at it, you know, some where we were back here. You see? This is a daily. There's February here we are in March. That's today. Today we made a slightly lower yet low than yesterday, and it was exactly at that number right there, 102.55. So now we've got the Federal Reserve in here, and we're going to find out what they're going to be doing here in just about an hour or so from where we are. So that's what I'm looking at ahead of time, and I'm sure they're going to come in and have a lot of fun with it. And we'll see what's going to go on. Uh, there's a lot of news about Credit Suisse and all these things. You hear, you hear 25 different opinions of everybody, you know. Oh, we're going to get a free trip today, folks. We are going to go over to uh, the U.K. and we're going to take a look at the FTSE for one of our friends over there, Niger, Nigel Terry and his uh, lovely family. Let's get this up here. You'll see it. There's where we are. We had these beautiful move down. You see they're perfectly symmetrical. And now we rallied up into the 382 level here uh, in the FTSE. Now, the FTSE is a index traded at the U.K., but the problem is it's just all foreign stocks in it. There's no U.K. stocks in there. So that's that's part of the reasoning behind it. Okay, now the, the secret to – not there's no secret. The key, in my opinion, is what we have going here is something like this. This happened to be a very large bank, signature bank in New York – Everybody's been bailed out, so you don't have to worry about that. Even though Janet Yellen said, oh, there'll be no more bailouts. Well, that's what the Federal Reserve has been doing. Well, the history is going to be writing about this for some time to come. But you can see this stock had been in a downtrend for well over a year, folks. I mean, it had so many 382 retracements here. And then, of course, <clears throat> they finally said, <clears throat> there's a problem. The problem is we don't know how big the problem is because what, we're, what they're telling us is probably not the truth, just like they do with wars and all the other stuff. And I'll probably be banned forever just for me saying that, but that's the way the news is, folks. It's, uh, you know, they, they tell you partial truths. Okay, now I want to do one other one that I think is important because uh, Jim Bartolioni will be our guest here on uh, – hold on here just a second if I can find a doggone thing. And I think it's this one right here. 
Uh, nope, that's not that one. Well, basically, Jim will be on talking to us about uh, the potential move we have coming in the uh, natural gas. And then he's also going to be talking to us about what he talked to us about three weeks ago, alerting to the fact that the banking index was going to go down big time because we had that beautiful Garley at the 382, and that one worked relatively well. Now, we're going to have Stan Harley coming up, and he's always given us some you know, really great things to look at. And then tomorrow, we will have uh, Shane Smolian, and on Friday, Jim Bartley. And we'll be right back, boys and girls. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, on the line now. Hello, Larry. Good afternoon. Hey, hello, Stan. Hey, folks, I want you to listen to me here from the old cowboy here in Tucson, Arizona. I'm about as much as a cowboy is as Dustin Hoffman was in uh, that Midnight Cowboy. But you have on the line here today Stan Harley that's going to give you an explanation of what left translation means, and it is really important. The only other person that I know that can do this is Peter Elides, and he doesn't like to share that kind of stuff. So this is really important, Stan. So explain to them what the left translation is, because it's really important. Absolutely, Larry. Um, what I thought I'd do is uh, go through uh, some of the things that I look at um, with respect to the markets and the structure that can tell us quite a bit. This is a concept I've discussed with you on the air, and I certainly talked about it a lot in my own work. 
It was first brought to my attention oh, about more than 30 years ago by the late Walter Brezard. Uh, I've studied the phenomenon and it's a very, very valid pattern. Basically, uh, it's this, and this is a chart right out of his book uh, over here on the left, the, uh, the Power of Oscillator Cycle Combinations that he published back in January of 91. And what he noted was that in the idealized cycle, it's not a sinusoidal function like we see in nature. Um, imagine you have a, a trough to trough scenario in the, in the engineering world, the crest of that cycle occurs right to the right at the midpoint. However, in the financial world, that's not the case. What tends to happen is we see the crest of the cycle occur either to the right or the left of the midpoint. And in a rising market environment, the crest or the high point of the cycle tends to lean to the right, as you can see from that chart on the left. In a declining market environment, you still get the same low to low cyclical schedule, but the, or it, it could contract and expand, but the important point is to know where the crest has occurred. And if the crest occurs to the left of the midpoint, then you have what's called left translation with lower crests and lower troughs. And that's indicative of a declining market. Um, sometimes you get centered translation and that happens when you're going from say a bullish environment to a bearish environment, the translation will shift towards the middle and then it shifts to the left. Well, we have all the above in the next few charts. Let's start off by taking a look at the stock market. Um, a lot of technicians, I think, make a big mistake here. They look exclusively at one index, and most of them tend to look at the S&P 500. Uh, that is certainly the broadest measure of market activity by, by most, not, not the broadest, but it's certainly the one that's the most common. It's the 500 largest stocks in the New York Stock Exchange. The uh, futures, S&P 500 futures, of course, are indexed based on the S&P 500 cash index. And most money managers follow the S&P and, uh, and peg their performance to that. Uh, but there are actually four, under in, four other indices that I think are equally important. And you and I and everyone else there as market technicians should be tracking all five of these together to look for either confirmations of the trend or divergences, which typically popped up at reversal points. And for me, the big five are, as I show here on the chart, the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ Composite, the New York Composite, and last but certainly not least, the, the Dow Transports. I look at all five of those. Well, let's take a look at some charts of each of them. Boy, the first one is a, is a chart of the S&P 500. Uh, and I ran this off uh, a little over an hour ago. Uh, this goes back about a year's time. And uh, where I have put the red arrows at the bottom reflect a cyclical parameter that I have tracked for many, many years. I wrote an article about it in the uh, magazine for the, the Foundation of the Study of Cycles. I call it the primary weekly cycle. There's a primary weekly cycle, there's a primary monthly cycle, there's a primary daily cycle. On the weekly charts, the primary weekly cycle is about 34 weeks, eight months. Both of those are Fibonacci numbers, surprise, surprise. It's about 169 trading days. And that cycle, uh, like all cycles, it contracts and expands. But uh, if one looks at a sufficiently large enough sample size and does the analysis, one will find uh, nominally it's right at 34 weeks. Each of these 34 week cycles tends to have four, typically four sub cycles embedded within it. I call these the trading cycle. And I've marked these one, two, three, four, as you can see. Uh, now in the first trading cycle from the October bottom of last year, the trading day count on the S&P chart from low to low was 49 trading days. And take note of where the crest occurred on December the 13th. It was to the right of the center of that cycle. In other words, right translation. Fast forward to the second trading cycle, which just culminated a few days ago, last week. That was 53 trading days, trough to trough. The crest, occurred on February the 2nd, and it was just one day to the right of being exactly in the midpoint, but we'll mark it right translation. And then we've got two more trading cycles to go. All right, let's look at another chart. File that one away for the moment. Okay. This is just like- Here's a chart the of the Dow Industrials. Very, very similar 
but the highs and the lows did not come in at exactly the same dates as the S&P. Close, but not exactly the same. Uh, and, and that's important to take note of. Uh, the first trading cycle from the October of last low of last year, 49 trading days, trough to trough. Uh, the high occurred on December 13th, right translation. Second cycle from mid-December to the low that occurred on the 15th of March, that was 55 trading days. And the high of the cycle occurred to the left of the midpoint for the Dow chart. So that was left translation. Wow. Let's look at another component of the big five, the New York Composite Index. First trading cycle from the October low, 46 trading days. The high occurred just a smidgy widgy to the right, right translation. Second trading cycle, low to low, 58 trading days. The uh, high occurred right exactly at the midpoint. So we're gonna call that one center translation. The last one was right, now it's shifting left. Hmm, is there a message here? Well, you bet there is. Wow. What I've done here is I've summarized all five components. The S&P 500 and the most recent trading cycle had right translation, the Dow had left translation, the NASDAQ had left translation, New York Composite Center, Dow Jones Transports left. Okay, you don't need a calculator to do the average. You could do that with the Mark 1A eyeball. Clearly, left translation in the most recent trading cycle. Left translation is indicative of lower prices yet to come. Wow. That's very good. Folks, you know, I have Stan on here every, at least every couple of weeks, but uh, I understand the importance of what you're talking about, Stan, because I started at the beginning just like you did when Hearst came out with his stuff, and then Walt Bresser expanded on left translation and right translation. But this is so important. I hope people really appreciate what you're telling them here because you're not going to find this on Elliott Wave or anything like that. I mean, this is this is the real text of how market turns in, in bear is. market yeah, bear markets they translate to the left in bull markets they transfer to the right and we've been in a bull market since you know March the 5th of 2009 and of course we turned bearish in January the 4th so that's why these things are important right now hey we've got to take a break Stan please stay with us and Stan Absolutely. would you be able to do another segment uh, uh, an hour from now because I'm setting in for one of our good friends uh, David I, White I, I, I'd be delighted. We got Except. a couple more charts after the break, and then if you yeah, want yeah. later in the day, absolutely, it'd be my pleasure. That's great, wonderful. We'll be right back, Stan Harley, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. And uh, Stan, I have to stand corrected here because, you know, I've been looking to left translation, right translation as long as you have. And for some reason, uh, you know, Jim Hurst was my customer when I was at Drexel. You know, he only did like three trades in four years, but uh, they were they worked. But, uh, you know, I always assumed that it was he that did that, but it was actually, you were right, it's Walt Bressert. And the reason why I'm here in Tucson was because of Walt Bressert. You know, he and his uh, lovely family lived here, and Jerome and, and his uh, his widow are still living here. And I'll be doggone if I went and looked at the Hearst book, because I keep it here on my desk, and I thought, but what, what am I thinking about this? And then I realized it was Walt Bressert that uh, taught me the left translation, right translation. It wasn't Jim Hearst. So anyway, let, let, I'll let you go go ahead and, and go on, and you'll, uh, you'll hear more of it. Go ahead, please. To the profit magic of stock transaction by yep. J.M. Hurst. That's it right there yep. uh, on yep. my bookshelf. I keep it on my desk, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Hurst said nothing about right and left translation. He did um, not. You're right. Other than uh, Bresert and then uh, and then myself kind of reinforcing it. Uh, but he, to my knowledge, uh, he was the first to recognize it. And it's indeed a very valid, valid uh, concept. Sure is. Uh, We've got a lot of volatility potentially coming up here in the next half hour. It's going to be exciting. Um, and I suspect uh, it'll all, it'll all uh, flush out. Maybe we may get a head fake in the wrong direction. Um, the short-term trend, though, I believe is probably higher for about another week, maybe into the end of next week. We'll see. Um, but the, uh, the indications of left translation in the prior trading cycle – tells me when this current trading cycle runs out of juice, it's probably gonna head lower into mid-June. Having said that, I, th I heard you talking about 2009 about an hour ago. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a different take on the stock market, uh, kind of a parallel. I think it looks more like 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. Back then, the benchmark averages made a low on October the 10th, 2002, exactly 20 years almost to the day, uh, to the low we saw in 2022. Then the market made a 34, contracted 34 week cycle bottom in March of 2003 and came down and tested the October lows. Some stocks went lower, some did not. Uh, and I think uh, the parallels are uncanny. The trading cycle pattern back then, the trading cycle pattern now looks remarkably similar. That that cycle contracted a little bit, but uh, take a look at 2002, 2003, from October 10th, 2002, to I believe it was March 12th, 2003. Very, very similar environment. Take those trading cycles and multiply by 1.618, 1 1 and they kind of look like what's happening today. Um, that's, uh, wow. take a look at, uh, we're going to look hey, at gold now, charge, shall we? Yeah, let's look at the gold here. Yeah, I'm the old yellow some, metal. I'm looking at some here. spots because i got a bright light staring at me. <laughs> there we go. Now I've got it on my screen. Um, here is a monthly going monthly chart of, uh, of gold traded on the COMEX in New York. And uh, going back uh, many, many years, one can see the dominant troughs uh, 
occurred uh, about every 94 months. Uh, in fact, there's a very clear cycle of 94 months, plus or minus about eight. And uh, we had a low in March of 70. Six, we had a low in February of 85, March of 93, that one of April 2001, I think I heard you talking about yesterday, uh, that you exploited. Um, and then the last one was December 2015. And the, new, the next one is due in the latter part of, uh, of next year. All right, let's see if we can hone this down a little bit. In the uh, next chart, uh, what I've done is I've taken a, a weekly snapshot of, of gold uh, over the last few years. And uh, over on the left, we've got the all-time high, which occurred in the, uh, in the summer of 2020. And then the big reversal that occurred uh, on Monday of this week. Uh, what is interesting, Larry, is when I lay my Fibonacci eyes on top of the weekly chart, I see a very clear 0 0.146, 0 0.236, 0 0.382, 0 0.618, Fibonacci ratio emanating from the all-time high in 2020. I mean, it lines up beautifully. And then when I carry that forward in time, why it lines up in uh, late 2024, which, oh, by the way, is exactly when that 94-month cycle uh, trough is due to reoccur. Uh, so uh, I think we probably put an important high in gold. Uh, remains to be seen, of course, but it kind of looks like we've seen that. And I think we're going to Stair step our way, not not straight down, of course, but stair step our way lower into the uh, latter part of next year to make the next 94 month cycle low. Oh wow, this is uh, this is really really great. I um, I have one other question. Uh, I know you you do you do work on Treasury bonds, don't you, Stan? Because I'm uh, I do. I didn't bring any charts. No, I know bonds. that. I just wanted to do that another chat time. with you. Uh, what what is your opinion of the Treasury bonds in here? You know, with the Fed coming out here in about another uh, ten. When, there's the announcement at eleven o'clock, and then he talks at uh, ten fifteen or something. It's at the top of the hour. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, it's twelve minutes from now, so it'll be a little yes. too late to do anything. But what's your feeling on the uh, uh, direction of bonds sure. uh, that we're watching? Um, I think uh, bonds have seen their high. Um, I've got data going back several hundred years, and gold or not gold, but Treasury bonds slash interest rates have. Uh, Clear, made clear evidence of a cycle spanning 40 years. Every 40 plus or, minus about, plus or minus about two years, interest rates slash bonds tend to make a major pivotal turn. And uh, the last occurrence of that was in October of 81. Before that was summer of 1940. Before that, summer of 1900. Before that, 1860. <laughs> um, every 40 years. And so you take October 81, you add 40 years to it, and you get the latter part of 2021. Well, we had a major reversal in 2020 within one year, close enough for government work, as they say. Yes. So I think the trend in interest rates is higher, and the trend in Treasury bonds is lower, uh, not just for years, probably for decades. The last uh, series of these 40-year cycles spanned 40 years. Does that mean interest rates are going to go up 40 years? Well, very possibly. Um, I'm not prepared to make that statement just yet, but what I am prepared to say is we made a major 40-year cyclical turn in interest rates, and interest rates are going to creep higher for the next several years, perhaps even decades. Wow, that's really good. Listen, I'm going to let you go now, but you're going to come back on at, uh, that would be at 2.30, and uh, we'll re review this again, because this is this important, folks. If you like cycles and Fibonacci, this is where it all comes from, so... Please stay with us again at 2.30. At, at you'll be back on. Is that we're affirmed on that? That is correct, yes. Okay, that's great. Listen, thanks for joining us now. And I will await the, the what do they call the anticipation of bated breath when Mr. Powell comes on and tells us what he's doing. Stan, do you ever think that he shares any of this information with anybody? That's a joke. Anyway, <laughs> hey, listen, buddy. Thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, joining us. And we'll, we'll see you at, uh, in, in about an hour. Uh, about a half an hour. How's that? Look forward to it. You bet. Me too. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned for the end of the show. 877-927-6648.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the NASDAQ going back to the high that it made in December of 2022. Uh oh, let's try it again, 2021. Uh, our, our market topped in January of 2023-22. So what we're seeing here is a market that's come down just about uh, 11 months, and now it's been rallying three months. You notice it's sitting right at the 382 for the second time. We're already 200 handles under that with the Fed coming in today. I don't know if someone got some information. I don't know. But all I can say is this is a really important spot. I went through the Russell. I went through the S&P. And I went through the NASDAQ, so all three of them are covered. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much what we're looking at here is I think something really dramatic is going to happen here. I don't know if the Fed – I think the cycle is there. Maybe they're, they just might be the thing behind it. I don't know. And second thing is uh, I will, I will, I'll be happy to cover that next. Yes, thank you, Jacob. But I will uh, – I'm going to cover these again on the next show with David White because this is – this is this important, folks. This is important to, as time that we have, where we're in right now is where we are on March 5th. And when I tried to send this out today, I was blocked by Google for some reason. I don't, still don't know if the charts are still getting out or not. But I know the ones from TFNN went through. For some reason, they were the only ones that went through with the 24-7 people. All of the other people probably didn't get it <laughs> too much. So anyway, this is, uh, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at something that I think is historic. Probably isn't, but who knows. But we're seeing it just about 
a lot of different things. So we'll, we're going to find out whether this stuff really works or not very, very shortly. We're going to take a little break now. And when we come back, I'm going to do the show for uh, uh, that used to be done by David White. And I'll do that one next uh, after we take a little bit of break here. And we're going to have Stan Harley as our guest for the second hour to go through this again. Okay. All right. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. 